so again welcome back to our channel it's a trap so today I'll show you some of the technique what I'm uh, using now for my carnivorous plant how uh, did I uh, acclimate them using some of my new experimental technique <laughs> so maybe you're wondering how did I uh, manage to acclimate this uh, this uh, Highlander plants, the, the Pentestraha, Edward China. What uh, special things that I did uh, other than uh, uh, acclimating them in a usual way. So I'll share to you what uh, specifically the things that I uh, uh, just did to acclimate those plants so that uh, it can be slowly acclimate in this uh, low humidity environment so what I did is I uh, get some materials here on this uh, area which is the aloe vera plant yes you heard me right I am been I've been experimenting with this plant uh, since I'm uh, planting my uh, grape cuttings I usually submerging my cuttings and also the newly arrived nepenthes uh, in this uh, aloe vera juice so I'll show you how I am doing it so that you can also try it maybe it will be uh, you can also see if it is effective or maybe it's just uh, my imagination but for me I think it has a lot of benefits on your plants even if your plant is carnivorous plant trying other things from time to time I think it will really help so just make sure that the, that the aloe vera I think uh, leaves or the part of the aloe vera that you're gonna use is the old uh, old material so that uh, the new materials will be left for your plant to uh, not to be stressed too much so that's what I'm uh, doing now I'm, I, I got uh, one leaf of aloe vera and some small part of it that is I think decomposing instead of throwing it away or letting it uh, dried and decompose I took it and now I'll, I will gonna make some aloe vera juice so <laughs> I'm not gonna drink it but it's also beneficial for you if you want but he, now I, we are gonna use it for our carnivorous plant so you can wash it first or you can use it right away because your plant uh, if it is grown outdoor for a long time using this kind of materials it will not give them uh, bad, side, bad side effects instead you'll get a lot of benefits in it so what I'm uh, doing is I'm uh, you can wash it but <laughs> I told you you can just uh, squeeze it and crush it in your hands and you will notice the aloe vera gel is really uh, cool to touch and it's good for your skin and also based on my research it has also some rooting um, uh, hormone or benefits in your uh, plants for them to root properly so it also helps for those uh, plant wounds from cuttings that you just made or maybe from the plant that is newly arrived it gives a good coating to your plants so that uh, it will uh, not dry, e dry easily especially if it is on uh, environment where it has a constant high humidity like when it's on shipping that's why using this technique it can also help your plant acclimate much easily and also you can see right away the effect of it because it will also be absorbed by the stomata of the leaves of your plant if this has leaves like an nepenthes I use it on my nepenthes raha and edward chana and some of the hybrids that I got from my friends and to be honest I'm also using it on my Venus flytrap that's why we're gonna make some uh, 
propagation today together with this video so this, this is just to show you that using this uh, juice aloe vera juice is uh, safe to your carnivorous plant as you can see uh, I'm gonna measure it and show it to you that it's also on the low ppm level or total dissolved solid level so from zero it just goes up up to 20 ppm totally lower than that and if you imagine mixing it on maybe pure uh, ml of water you can imagine that it will increase to 30 to 40 but not more than 50 actually i used two aloe vera leaves in just maybe um, 250 ml of water or uh, rain water and it just goes up to 48 ppm that's why it's very mild so you know, just make sure that you're using distilled or rain water when you're doing or you're mixing uh, aloe vera juice for you to use it in your carnivorous plant but if it is for just a non-carnivorous plant you can use any water that is safe to your plants so now we're gonna use it on this propagation this is a dcxl propagation from the previous mother plant that we got and the uh, old rhizome that we are that we planted we're gonna put, get some of good amount of division from that small rhizome that we just planted before so that's why it's very ideal to for you to let your uh, pr uh, propagation or your division of the rhizome and not divide it right away you, you just need to wait for the time that it, it has its own uh, root system and also good amount of uh, petioles and traps so that it will be established so just make sure that you don't hurt other plants around that uh, big lump of uh, uh, rhizome division and I'm using my uh, new DGI OM4 for this video because I think it's gonna help to establish the shots but uh, I'm barely new using this uh, gadget that's so why I'm so sorry if it is still a little bit uh, 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 the shot is not that very good so this is the whole plant as you can see it's a little bit uh, good clump so that uh, it can already been divided into its individual uh, division or plantlets so when you get this uh, clump of penis ply trap that is concentrating to one uh, rhizome it's good if you will gonna remove the old medium but be careful not to hurt the uh, healthy uh, root system because it will take more energy for them to generate those beautiful root system although carnivorous plant they rely on they mainly rely on their uh, traps to get nutrients but also having a good root system is uh, also big uh, help for you to uh, much easily to acclimate this uh, beautiful clumps of plants so as you can see they already have big rhizome that's why I think next time that I'm gonna have, have a division I'll, I'll make sure that I wait to wait proper time before dividing it so that I can have this kind of big and healthy rhizome they are really good and uh, they are uh, compared to the other division that I made before it is uh, much uh, uh, fat the rhizome is fat and uh, um, very globus so that uh, I think it's a very good division there you just need to divide it and just be aware the rhizome can be pulled easily so that so that you will not damage the main rhizome that where you get it so it also you can also uh, moist it using your uh, some uh, regular water 
distilled or rain water so that you can easily divide these plants so what I'm doing now I'm submerging the division on our uh, aloe vera juice usually I'm uh, submerging it for about eight hours but just for this video I'll just use it for you to see that I'm uh, submerging it for uh, just few minutes of uh, this video because it will also help to for your uh, newly divided plant that it was coated with aloe vera juice I'm so surprised when the Nepenthes Raha been acclimated for just a couple of uh, days after I was uh, repotted it at day one the the Pentis Raha new growth been uh, seen that it was curling that's why I'm really <laughs> nervous because I thought it will uh, die or it will the health the health will be declined and I really need to put it on the fridge at night because that's what others said to me that it needs around 10 degrees Celsius of temperature drop at night but uh, unfortunately I don't have that kind of setup and I'm not planning to put my plants on the fridge every night and then because I have a lot of plants to take care of and plus I have another other side hustle to take care so I, I just let it outdoor and pray for pray to God that uh, he will uh, help me how to care for this plant so I also use some aloe vera juice to spray it on my nepenthes so after the day that it was curling and i'm very afraid and i, I did a lot of research research on facebook youtube and forums lip curling is uh, it is due to maybe low humidity also some disturbance of fruits or maybe it came from long shipping and you put it on the setup where there is uh, the temperature is warm and low humidity and it will result on that uh, leaf curling but what i did i uh, put a lot of live sphagnumos on both uh, sides of the, the planter aside from the live sphagnumos around the plant and i think it really helps because on day two the curling is uh, lessened on the day three the curling is totally uh, corrected and the plants uh, continuously giving a, a good sign that he is uh, acclimating and loving the new environment so I think aloe vera juice <laughs> and live sphagnumos is uh, really helping the setup and also and uh, I'm not forgetting to pray to, for, for God to give me wisdom how to take care of these plants so for the the Ventus Raha, it he was already I think uh, acclimated, and for the Nifentes Edward Shana, I did a little mistake because I sprayed a uh, higher uh, maxi concentration, like around 120, and uh, I put also some of the dead bugs on uh, its small traps because I wanted to have. Uh, want to try if it will tolerate some of a natural uh, uh, nutrients that you can get from the dead bugs so after a few days I see the Edward China that he, he is uh, doing good and some of my friend on Facebook that has also uh, same collection uh, he told me that uh, Nepenthes Edward China is really sturdy if uh, you are in that uh, place where it has a fairly a good amount of humidity and uh, it's uh, you have a cooler temperature in your area but uh, in my case as you can see in this area the wind is very strong and uh, low humidity but because we have live sphagnumos it also helps the world china to acclimate I didn't see any decline of health in Edward China. I see it on Raha, but not on Edward China. That's why uh, I'm 
comfortable now that uh, at least I can keep them alive. I can promise that I can uh, put a good uh, featuring on those uh, species of Nephentes but at least I can keep them alive. And uh, when my uh, new setup for the Highlands is complete, I will put them there and see uh, how will gonna the whole country, how they will gonna react on the new growing area. So here, back here, in our propagation of Venus flytrap, as you can see, I'm just using uh, some scrap from the live sphagnumus, the brown area where. It came from the lower part of the propagation of the live sphagnumus. I used it to wrap the rhizome that was newly cut and uh, find a place where it can grow without uh, the shade of other plants. And I'm sorry if this is a little bit blurry because I haven't found a way <laughs> to have uh, autofocus on this DJI software. Maybe there is some uh, setting that I need to to change so by the way uh, when you are uh, repotting or propagating this uh, plants it is uh, good if you didn't if you will be very very careful not to trigger those traps because it will take a lot of toll of uh, energy for the plant to, to recover it so that's why when I'm propagating Venus flytrap I always make sure that uh, I I will avoid the triggering the traps even if it is it will take uh, I will take some propagation from that plant at least you give them uh, lesser stress so your plant will uh, acclimate and thrive properly in their new uh, uh, propagation area so oh, hopefully you're learning something from this video just uh, focus on what's on the video <laughs> if you think some of my tips uh, help you please don't forget to like and subscribe this video because uh, most of the viewers that view my video <laughs> is not a subscriber yet so but it's okay I don't expect uh, a lot of uh, viewers to subscribe yet because uh, my channel is uh, still small compared to the other channel here in YouTube but hopefully I can help you in a small way on your uh, hobby on the carnivorous plant also if you have some requests just don't hesitate to let me know I'm more than happy to hear from you because uh, Sometimes I don't have any idea what to do next on the next video, but some of you guys is kind enough to tell me what's, uh, what, do you, what you need so that next time that I'll make a video, I already know what to uh, make so that it will benefit uh, most of you that needs those uh, tutorials. So. Uh, some of the viewers also asked me if they need to wash this uh, sphagnumos. It came from the live sphagnumos. You don't need to wash it. If it is a uh, healthy uh, sphagnumos, you don't need to wash it. But if it came from uh, sphagnumos blocks that you, we can, you can buy in a horticulture shop or agriculture shop, it's better for you to wash, wash it first and take uh, TDS reading first because some of the sphagnum that we can buy from other sellers especially the black sphagnumus blocks it has some chemicals on it or maybe it, it has some impurities like uh, old leaves of, of grass that has uh, or maybe some uh, uh, old uh, materials that it came from uh, long shipping and contamination has uh, also occurred you, you will notice that it has a high TDS reading or high PPM reading for those uh, blacks, sphagnumus blacks I experienced it before and I know you know what I'm talking about 
So it's better for you to wash those uh, sphagnum moss blocks first and use TDS meter. But for this uh, live sphagnum moss, I am confident enough uh, that I use it for a long time, that it has a low ppm because it came from a live sphagnum moss. And uh, even it came from uh, other sources that uh, they just put it on the street to, for them to dry the live sphagnum moss and sell it as a a dry sphagnumos um, it has still lower ppm compared to those sphagnumos blocks so uh, I haven't updated some of the pictures on the Shopee store that we have but uh, maybe, maybe next uh, next year maybe I can uh, update all of it because we already prepared uh, those uh, individual pots. So after you plant it, it's better if you will water it. So I suggest you use uh, this rechargeable mister or water uh, rechargeable water sprayer. Just make sure that you use the right uh, misting head which has uh, the most fine uh, setting because if it is, has a lot of pressure that it will also trigger the traps but as you can see it is not triggering the traps because it is very fine and make sure when you're buying it always check the device if it is working properly because like this one I found a little leak on that uh, lance area of that uh, misting system that's why I applied for partial refund and it was uh, approved so that uh, I can be reorder the area which has a damage so as you can see this plant is doing great on uh, on this medium by the sphagnum uh, uh, sphagnum moss and fair light and uh, as you know this is uh, old uh, medium that we just wash and boiled so that it will be low ppm so make sure that this it is a properly a setup and just put it in the way where how did uh, the position should be the same when you get it and when you bring it back so that it will uh, acclimate much easier so as you can see it's already uh, already big and we'll just wait for a couple of maybe weeks when they produce a uh, new growth better picture uh, better traps hopefully so that's it guys hope you learned something from this propagation video my suggestion is you watch it carefully what i'm doing and just uh, do it also so that you will experience how to divide it on your own so bye bye guys, you're the best.